companies like G4S, are, uh, you know, um, are, are doing their damnedest uh, to, to basically, you know, um, make sure that that doesn't happen by not doing things properly. You know, obviously, you know, I want to try and stay in there for as long as possible uh, without getting found out by G4S, so I'm sure there's going to be a big manhunt in the next time I go into work, you know, if, if, they're, if they're listening to this. Um, uh, and, 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 and try and really stay there for as long as possible to see what the outcomes of all this is. Because if I was to leave now, obviously I'd only have half the picture. So I actually want to stay in there for as long as possible, hopefully to the Olympics, and uh, and then keep reporting back on, on, on what's going on and how they're doing. In no, the well, nice one, Lee. And I hope you can ma- maybe report back to this show over the weeks as long as you get on. Uh, now, also, another thing you said, that, is that, that which is also really worrying, is that uniforms are going missing or being stolen from the uniform distribution centre in the training facilities yes absolutely okay um this came directly from um a contemporary international person and i reconfirmed it with a g4s security guard um uh, somebody had come into the training area and they uh were given a uniform by mistake and they were told to then go back out to, 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 to hand it back in and then someone else came out and said you know uniforms are going missing all the time if you've got a letter to pick up a uniform, you're the only people that's supposed to pick up a uniform, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, but people aren't. People are going up to the um, uh, uh, uniform um, uh, depot, as it were, and saying, I'm here for a uniform. Oh, I forgot my email. And again, don't worry about it, we'll give you a uniform. Now, again, we know in Iraq, in Afghanistan, terrorists get police and security uniforms. They dress up, they have the accreditation, they then come back in, and then they, they, they do something. This is you know modus operandi you know of a terrorist so that to me is extremely worrying as well and on top of the uniforms as well uh, people have been given the wrong accreditation material and the accreditation material comes from LOCOG and what LOCOG do is that they look at everybody and they say okay you're going to be a security guard for G4S these are the areas that you're allowed to go into you know, you're going to be assigned to the stadium or you're going to be assigned just the outer perimeter. And in the outer perimeter, that gives you access to the, to the Olympic Park. Or if you're in the stadium, that's going to give you access to, you know, all the administration buildings, the Olympic Park and the other Olympic venues only, right? People have been saying that they've been given the wrong accreditation. I had um, uh, an army guy come to me and he said, look, you know, I've just basically been given the wrong accreditation. Um, and I was told to go away and come back in a week um, uh, to get to get it replaced in a week. I mean, you know, this is crazy. What happens if that guy didn't come back? You know, he was, an, you know, you can see he was an honest guy and he was worried. And so, you know, what happens if that, you know, a terrorist actually goes there and says, look, you know, I want accreditation. He, I'm on the training course. Here's my, you know, proof I'm on the training course. They give him accreditation. It's the wrong accreditation and he just never comes back except when he, the game start and he will be able to walk into the Olympic Park. They, this is how worrying it all is. You know, uniforms going missing, wrong accreditation being given to people. I mean, this is not just G4S. This is Contemporary International, and this is LOCOG as well. And let's just say that LOCOG um, is a private company, and basically they're not accountable to anybody, as they keep telling us, you know? Okay, um, we're getting towards the end of your... Because you sent me a sort of bullet point list of various things uh, that you discovered. And one of the most worrying ones is that there is also a plan for the evacuation of the whole of London as part of the uh, 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 Olympic plans and G4S are involved in, just in case something goes wrong. The whole of London? Can you really evacuate the whole of London? Well, that's what I said, but apparently you can. And um, uh, the uh, as far as I know, what, what's basically... What's going to happen is that uh, the security yards used for the Olympics will be at the forefront of getting the public out of London. And I don't know how they're going to do that because we haven't been told that much. But that's all that basically they've said to us is that if there's need for an evacuation of London, and they, they seem quite serious about it, this didn't seem something like, you know, they spent a lot of time on this. You know, for example, on day two, uh, they were talking about, you know, um, uh, the possession of screening areas, and they covered that in like half an hour. They spent a good two hours talking about the evacuation of London and how important. Now, just a minute, Lee. Lee, hang on a minute. There's a, something like eleven and a half million people in London. How the hell are they going to get eleven and a half million people out? 
Well, I don't know. But the thing is, if you think about it, if you've got, you know, um, you've got 125,000 people that are basically working for the Olympics at the Olympics time, that's including security, various contractors, and other people with accreditation, police, security, everything. Then you've got the army that's going to be there, and plus this other batch of army that are coming in. Now, if it's true that there really are 100,000 other troops coming into London and being held at barracks all around London, surely you know, maybe that would be enough um, to get people out of London if, I, I, I suppose, that there was a terrorist attack that was so horrific, everyone would want to go anyway, you know, and that's what, I, that's what I've been thinking about. That's the only way I guess, you know, people would, would want to leave London is if a biological chemical weapon had gone off. You'd want to get as far away from London as possible, and so therefore you need as much help as possible. The fact that they're saying it before the Olympics... Um, is quite worrying to me. Well, surely, I mean, they're saying that we're being, they're being well prepared, surely. Yeah, maybe so, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And, and that's what you've got to think, otherwise you wouldn't turn up for work, would you? <laughs> you know, um, but, you know, it's worrying, you know. I've never heard that said before, but then again, we've never had an Olympics here before, well, not in my lifetime anyway. So, you know, I'm, 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 I'm just being, you know, um, uh, again, paranoid about everything uh, a little bit, but then, you know, that's what's kept me alive all these years. Okay. The other, the final thing is the uh, casket linings. Uh, this is for basically for dead bodies. Uh, apparently, two hundred thousand of those being shipped into London. Yeah, these casket linings can hold. Um, I didn't know what they were at first because they said casket linings, and I said, "What's that?" Um, I said, "Is that for a coffin?" And they said, "No, it's kind of is a coffin." And I said, "Oh, okay." And they said, "Well, they can hold um, four to five bodies each casket lining can," and and I, and I suppose you know. Uh, again, if uh, uh, a terrorist attack or something was to happen at the Olympics, you'd probably need, you know, um, uh, a lot of these things, um, uh, you know, uh, to put people in, you know. Um, so, again, to me, again, that was quite worrying, you know. From the day one of joining the Olympics, I felt it's got more sinister as time has gone on. And, you know, obviously you're getting little tidbits of information. They're not telling you everything, Obviously, they can't because that's a security risk in itself. But if they just said, hey, look, this is a precaution, this isn't going to happen, but if it did, this is the procedures that we do. Well, they're not saying it like that. They're saying, these are the casket linings, and this is what, you know, we're going to be we're putting people in if something happens, you know. Um, and, and to me, I, you know, I don't think I need to know that as a security guard working for G4S on a pedestrian screening area. Maybe I do if I'm a policeman, maybe I do if I'm a part of the other emergency services, but as a security guard, I don't think we need to know all this particular information, you know, um, especially about the evacuation of London and things like that. And it seemed to me that they were reveling in giving us this information. They were giving us kind of, you know, one of the guys, um, Nicholas, who uh, is one of the trainers at Contemporary International, uh, was laughing about it as he was giving this information and almost sort of, you know, he was excited by it. And to me, that was worrying. If that was me giving the information, I'd be very deliberate, I'd be very sober, and I'd say, hey, look, you know, this is a precaution, but dot, 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 dot. And it's not being delivered that way. And you know, on the other hand, you can think, well, maybe, you know, these guys at G4S and Contemporary International, you know, they are ex-soldiers, they don't think anything of saying things, and they're just saying things as they would do if they were still in the army. And I understand that to a certain degree as well. OK, uh, well, Lee Hazeldean, thanks very much. And finally, I mean, I did say finally just now, but again, finally, I've just noticed something else that you scri scribbled to me. And that was uh, that we've got search and destroy drones as well. Now, this is something I think which is quite new to London. We've heard about these missile bases on the tops of tower blocks, but not the search and destroy drones. Yeah, the predator drones. Yeah, uh, we were told that quite specifically, actually. They said that, um, they said, you know, if a uh, terrorist attack, you know, happens in a van or anything like that, don't worry because there's predator drones in the sky and they will take them out. You won't ever see them, but they're circling uh, London. Um, and again, I found that a little bit worrying as well. These are the sort of uh, Yemen and Afghanistan type things, aren't they, that have been killing people over there? That's, we were shown a video, actually. Um, they, they showed us uh, a PowerPoint presentation, a little bit about the drones, what they do, what they carry, um, and, and, and how now they uh, recognise targets and stuff, how they're flown remote controlled. And, um, and we were shown a little video of them taking out um, uh, a group of people, I think it was in Afghanistan. Um, and I found that very upsetting, quite honestly. You know, um, a few people cheered in the, um, in the crowd, but I don't cheer when I see, you know, people getting killed, whether they're 
you know, so-called Taliban terrorists or not. You know, I find that very disturbing, quite frankly. And do, do you think it would have been uh, possible for, say, ordinary police to have done this job rather than a massive company like G4S? Yeah, absolutely. That's what the police are trained for. This is what they do every day. I mean, uh, you know, at least I think if that you were to bring on private security, then, you know, yes, out of perimeters private security with the pedestrian screening areas being, perhaps with the team leader being a policeman. You know, if there's not enough policemen to do the whole job, then private security should be, you know, people who are doing the metal detector and, and things like that. Professional police to actually oversee that and, and, and professional police people who can train the x-ray operator, uh, operators who or could be the x-ray op operators. You know, surely there's enough people in the country or, you know, we could even fly them in from around the world, I suppose, who are professional x-ray operators, you know, just for this event. You know, how hard can that be, you know? But I, well, I, I do think the police need to take a bigger role uh, in what they're doing, because as far as they keep saying to us, they, they keep mentioning the police, but saying, oh, well, the police might, will be happy to help you. 